Peter stated in his presentation that 80% of all maritime accidents are caused by human error. However, I contend that this is an easy assertion to make because people are the common factor that are involved in all maritime activities. And I believe that the role of the human factor in the marine world is not yet fully understood. And we should be doing more to understand the psychology of the mariner, their limitations, and to remove some of the pressures under which they work. And this morning, I want to look at one aspect of human behavior, complacency, which I believe is a real problem in the maritime industry. But I also believe that there are measures we can take to address it. How do we get So, in my paper this morning, I would look, like to look at what is complacency, or do you already know? Is it a real problem, or am I being unfair to the professional mariner? Are management procedures really being implemented on board, and how can our industry respond? So, what is complacency? Well, the dictionary definition is a feeling of quiet pleasure or security, often whilst unaware of some potential danger, defect or the like, self-satisfaction or smug satisfaction with an existing situation or condition. Don't like that, doesn't apply to seafarers. So another definition, a feeling of contentment or self-satisfaction, especially when coupled with an unawareness of danger, trouble, or controversy. Don't like that one either. In respect to the maritime industry, I prefer a definition that was given by the UK Chief Inspector of Maritime Accidents. And he said, complacency does not imply smugness or self-satisfaction, but rather familiarity with an operation such that the possible consequences of something going wrong have largely been forgotten. Or simply put, familiarity breeds contempt. He reinforces his views on complacency, describing it as an aspect of human nature that every experienced mariner should recognize and guard against. That in the unforgiving maritime environment, things do go wrong. People do make mistakes. Equipment does fail. But safety barriers should be in place so that one or even more failures do not result in a catastrophe. He expresses frustration with officers who ignore <coughs> instructions and fail to apply basic professional principles despite being well trained, equipped and supported. Stating that accidents had occurred because watchkeepers have become so distracted by paperwork, chart corrections, mobile telephone calls, and now even computer games that they had neglected to monitor the radar, to look out the bridge window, or even to make planned course alterations. So complacency is one of the great threats to the mariner because much of what we do, planning, navigation, watch keeping, maintenance, Bunkering, cargo operations are repetitive. And when these tasks become routine, they become dangerous. And it's not just about seafarers. And I ask many of you to think about your journey to work in the morning. And you arrive in the office and you think, you can't remember the journey. It, you can't remember it because it's become automatic, it's routine, and it's only any change in the routine that makes it significant. So is complacency a real problem, or am I being unfair to the professional mariner? Tony Kern wrote a book called The Darker Shades of Blue, and it was about complacency in the airline industry. And he summed it up very well as the slippery slope of comprised discipline. If you've done it once and got away with it, the chances are you will try again. So be it faster, 
closer or with less thought. And unfortunately, the slide shows a set of circumstances familiar to us all. While researching for this paper, I counted the number of references to complacency in one governmental publication. And I quote, the frequency of mooring operations and the routine that developed around them invited complacency. It's easy for a degree of complacency to set in when handing and taking over the bridge watch. Complacency is a killer and it's vital that ship staff keep alert to the potential risks involved in mooring operations at all times. This accident clearly demonstrates that complacency can be dangerous. Now, John just mentioned rural ferries and the, the accidents surrounding them. And, and this highlights that there are two very different views in respect to familiarity and routinization. If you moor and unmoor a vessel four times a day, every day, then some will say, well, it's inevitable that you will eventually have an accident. While others, and I hope that you're all amongst them, will say that you should be so proficient in the practice that the likelihood of an accident is remote. Now, there are those amongst us who will state that complacency is a good excuse, and there's no such thing as poor practices, but rather poor systems, and that complacency is just a convenient term for incompetence. Now, I can't stand here and disagree that there may be poor systems, and I certainly agree that active seafarers are probably best able to write and review operational systems than their office-based counterparts. But the shore management has failed in its responsibilities under the ISM code if the vessel's command and crew feel that they cannot and should not influence the development of systems and even worse, and I do challenge people here, that the ship's crew think, well, it's not worth the effort because I'm not listened to and nothing will be done anyway. Now, complacency, for reasons that I'll discuss later, tends to be the hallmark of more seasoned, experienced officers and ratings. Inexperience and fast-track promotions are without doubt a problem faced by the industry today, but these create their own, albeit similar, problems. I cite an incident involving a cross-channel, a true incident, a cross-channel ferry in a dangerous close-quarters situation with a container vessel and a tanker. The navigational officer, so familiar with the crossing, was engaged on a telephone call on his mobile telephone. But at the time, he was sitting on the bottom step of the pilot's chair where he could not see out of the bridge front windows. And this was at 26 knots with 800 passengers on board. So is that complacency or incompetence? I leave you to decide. It's said that the capacity to follow know and follow authoritative guidance is the mark of a professional. Clearly, in the example cited, authoritative guidance was not being followed. Because we become an expert at one thing, for example, ship handling, it does not mean that we should become complacent <laughs> about others. Professionalism is about being balanced. Another interesting finding it was, I quote, it was apparent that a gap existed between the good intentions of the management company and the practical realities of operating the vessel. So this leads to the question, are management procedures really being implemented on board or has complacency led to a tick box culture? Despite all companies having robust safety management systems and being ISM compliant, accidents are still happening, although Safety management forms are being signed and returned. Checklists are being filled in. Superintendents' visit reports are being completed, circulated and closed out. So is it a case that sometimes we do not see the wood from the trees? So is complacency endemic throughout the maritime industry? 
My opinion is that complacency is endemic in any industry where the work is repetitive. And I quote a selection of incidents and injuries reported at a respected maritime forum. The chief engineer put his hand behind the flywheel, thinking the turning gear had been engaged. So did the electrician, the propeller turned. Another example, while he was in this position, he pulled what he thought was the engine throttle, but in this case was the release handle for the lifeboat. An engine room fitter was checking steel plates. They were unlashed, working himself, and they collapsed onto him, crushing him to death. A cook was chopping a meat carcass without due care and attention and chopped off his thumb. A member of the engine room crew using a drilling machine wearing gloves and amputated his middle finger. So what can cause complacency? Well, the more obvious causes are boredom. The work has become dull and uninteresting, no challenges, and the seafarer are tired and uninterested. Drudgery, the repetition of hard, meaningless, and dull work. Familiarity, the work has become so familiar that no challenge remains and the feeling that there's nothing left to learn. Ignorance, the lack of knowledge and information. No change management. Impulsiveness, the sudden desire to act without thinking of the result. We've done this so often that nothing can go wrong. And routinization, the effect of habitual or mechanical performance of established routine. And some of the less obvious, but probably more important, apathy. Lack of interest or enthusiasm. I'm only here for four weeks. I'll leave it to somebody else. Contentment. I've been in this ship for years. I'm very happy with the situation. Everything's the same as it's always been, and nothing can go wrong. Contempt. The feeling that authority or systems are worthless and beneath consideration. I've been in the company 20 years. What does this upstart of a superintendent know? I've been doing this all my life. Dumbing down, becoming less intellectually challenging. And I see this as a, a big problem as more management decisions get taken from the ship to the management office. And lastly, a feeling of invulnerability. This will never happen to me. So, this is important because understanding the causes of complacency give us some chance of addressing them. So how can our industry respond? Perhaps firstly, the recognition that complacency is a real problem. And unlike the offshore industry, the marine world still tends to be characterized by macho attitudes and behaviors, and that accidents are inevitable and simply part of getting the job done. So we need sustained education and supervision to break existing poor habits and introduce safer working methods, effective crew management and resource training, Procedures need to be regularly reviewed and tested. Encourage feedback, act and be seen to act. We need to challenge the cultures of our industry. We're very good at and prone to highlighting <coughs> poor performance. We're less oriented towards recognizing a job well done. And it's a proven fact that we all benefit from the pat in the back. We must show and recognize respect for every position and that everybody on board is a professional. If an individual believes that his role is not valued, there would be more tendency to slip into rogue behavior. So to summarize, let us not underestimate the issue. Maintaining vigilance in an atmosphere that nurtures complacency is an awesome challenge. Management at all levels must support a culture of compliance. Ignoring or missing a non-compliant act or circumstance is as good as endorsing the non-compliant action. There also can be a tendency to know and love the rogue. Yes, he's the best ship handler in the company and he always does it that way. How the, yes, he's Teflon coated. For the cooks amongst you, the, the responsibility slides off him. All right, until it goes horribly wrong, but don't fall into that trap. Complacency exists on board all vessel types and with all crews. It's endemic, contagious, and will not go away of its own accord. It's 
its symptoms are injuries, groundings, collisions and mooring accidents and it needs treatment. Finally, we must encourage an approach where each task is approached with the same caution as if it was being undertaken for the very first time. Thank you for your attention and I look forward to your comments. Thank you.